Hello, and welcome to SR Experts Tech Talks. My name is Mike Mangino, and I work for Nokia's Network Infrastructure Division. We're here to talk technology today with our experts. And as usual, if you have any questions after the talk, feel free to reach out to your Nokia representative. Hi, my name is Igor Jangrosi, and I'm a senior director in the pre-sales team for IP routing products uh, here at Nokia. In this session, uh, I'm gonna talk about some of the main topics you need to consider uh, when you're designing your 5G transport network. Uh, this presentation is not meant to be comprehensive and is not also meant to be a recipe with all of the answers, uh, but rather my intention here is to present some ideas uh, of the main focus areas that will help you create your own designs. So let's get into the technical part of the presentation. Um, this is a slide that presents the new architecture of 5G. Um, with a special focus on the radio. You can see the radio has been fully decomposed into three different elements. The RU, which uh, implements the PHI and the RF layer, uh, the DU that implements the PHI layer all the way to the RLC, and the CU that implements the PDCP and IP layers. So the CU uh, was done that way because it can be deployed on a cloud platform and as technology advances, the DU can also be uh, deployed on common off-the-shelf hardware. Um, the communication between the DU and the CU uh, is done through a new protocol called eCIPRI. So it's an Ethernet version of CIPRI. Uh, and uh, with that segment, we have a new name in the 5G transport network called Front Hall. Uh, we also have the interface between the DU and the CU called mid-hall, and the interface between the CU and the core is the typical back-hall interface that we all know. Uh, those splits have been made in such a way that uh, we call them high-layer split or non-real-time because that's where uh, all of the non-real-time um, processes take place in the CU. Uh, as well as lower layer split in the front hall uh, or real-time split because that's where all of the real-time functions take place. That new architecture presents some challenges that were not there initially uh, in 4G uh, that are specifically related to latency. So because we have some of these interfaces between internal radio components or intra-radio interfaces, uh, some of the latency limits on them are more stringent than we have ever had. Uh, and the most stringent um, latency is on front hall. So we have 100 microseconds unidirectional latency between the DU and the CU. Uh, and the net effect of that uh, latency limit is a distance limit as well. So routers will typically take uh, around 10 microseconds uh, to switch packets. And the fiber would typically take about um, uh, five microseconds per kilometer uh, to transfer light. So if you do the math, it, we're really talking about uh, 20 kilometers in, in, of distance between the DU and the CU. Uh, we also have uh, some new bandwidth requirements that you would, as you would expect with the new generation of uh, mobile networks. So, Backhaul, we're seeing a migration uh, from, in general, from one gigi to 10 gigi. And uh, for front haul specifically, we typically see at least 10 gig, but very commonly 25 gigis. Uh, mid haul will be typically very similar to, to backhaul. Now let's move to timing. And uh, timing in, in 5G or in any mobile network is a very important piece. It's as important as power because if timing goes away, uh, the network fails. So let's take a look at that. Uh, this is uh, a slide that shows some of the 5G timing requirements. Um, so uh, the main role of timing in a mobile network is to provide uh, mobility across all of the different cells. So uh, the different cell towers uh, need to be synchronized for you to be able to move between them. Uh, and the radio features are what are going to drive the timing requirements. So you can take a look at the, the, the chart on the right. Uh, you can see the G8271.1 um, timing accuracy requirements. So all the way from the GNSS uh, to the slave, you have a time error budget. 
And that maximum time error budget is 1.1 uh, microseconds. Um, so this is for the very basic category. Um, and uh, it's important to note that 5G mostly uses TDD spectrum, uh, which means it's a time division duplex and we need to synchronize with time. So um, we're going to talk about that uh, in, the, in the next slide. Now, when we have this 1.1 uh, microsecond budget, uh, if we typically deploy the GNSS receiver, PRTC, and the Grandmaster in a single combined element. Uh, when that is the case, the time error limit for that combined element is about 100 nanoseconds, uh, which leaves us uh, with one microsecond to the network, all the way from the Grandmaster to the slave uh, in terms of time error. If we look at the, the chart on the left, uh, that's the G8273.2 uh, limits for routers. And we typically have three classes of routers, um, classes A, B, and C, with uh, C being the, the more accurate class of router. And uh, the relevance of this specification is that if you introduce uh, those characteristics of time error, constant time error, uh, in a formula that is presented by the, the standard, you can pretty much calculate uh, the time error budget on your network for the various different uh, routers. And with that, you can check if you're still within those limits and uh, that will directly affect the number of hops in your network. So let's take a look at the most typical solution used to provide timing to all of the radios in a 5G transport network. And that solution is called FTS, full timing support, uh, which means that all of the nodes in the path, all the way from the timing signal to the radio, uh, must support timing protocols. Um, the profile specified by ITU for that is uh, G8275.1 which uh, outlines that uh, PTP or IEEE 1588 is used for time recovery and synchronous ethernet is used for uh, frequency recovery. Um, that timing signal is typically derived from a GNSS receiver or from a, uh, a GPS and transported all the way uh, to the radio. Again, with all of the nodes um, supporting timing protocols in between. So here we have three scenarios in this slide uh, that are pretty typical. So the, the first top scenario uh, is a fully uh, centralized radio where you have a CU, a DU, and RU, and you see that only the DU and the CU need to be synchronized. So that is the front hall segment. Um, and uh, you have the GPS connected to the DU and the timing signal flowing all the way to the RU. The middle picture has a, also a very common um, scenario, which is a cell site router connected directly to a fully distributed radio that, had a, that has the DU, RU, and the CU. Uh, and then the cell site router has an embedded GNSS receiver uh, with the Grandmaster. And the bottom scenario uh, is a possibility that is not very used. Uh, is technically possible, but the challenge here is that the further we bring the GPS signal uh, to a more centralized location, uh, the more stringent uh, it becomes uh, the, the requirements to have uh, to maintain the same, same time error uh, budget all the way through multiple hops. So uh, typically we stay with either the top scenario or the bottom scenario. Uh, and if you need redundancy when you have full timing support, you can just essentially uh, use a BMCA algorithm, which is a best master clock algorithm, uh, where you have two different grandmasters and the one that presents a better accuracy is selected. So uh, that is just part of the FTS um, uh, profile. Now, um, what happens if we have a timing unaware network? So uh, in other words, if we're typically using a third party to connect uh, to our cell site, uh, and that third party doesn't present us with the timing capabilities, uh, we have a timing unaware network. And in that case, when we are traversing a timing unaware network, we need another standard, which is a PTS, partial timing support. 
that is outlined by G8275.2. And uh, because the nodes in between don't support timing, it provides uh, less accuracy or, or worse performance compared to a full, uh, full timing support network. And uh, we have strict network limits to make sure that um, we, we can make it work. So in this case, in, in this slide, we are showing the scenario where we have a GPS backup using APTS, which is assisted partial timing support. So the signal from the Grandmaster will flow all the way uh, through this uh, timing unaware network to the cell site router where we have a GPS. Uh, the cell site router will measure the signal coming from PTS with the GPS. Uh, we'll check the time error difference and apply an offset on that PTS signal, such as um, when the GPS fails, that router can still correct uh, the PTS signal and present that signal to, uh, to the radio. So this gives us a, a nice solution for backup, but uh, the important note here is the bottom part of the slide where when you move that signal back to the grandmaster in the center of the network going through a timing unaware network, the maximum time error limits are still the same. Uh, this means that we need to be very careful when designing this timing unaware network uh, to make sure that all of the performance uh, and the target network performance limits are, are, are met. So uh, this concludes the presentation. I hope you could take away some uh, good ideas on how to enhance your 5G transport network design. Um, we would be thrilled to discuss that uh, with you in more details. This, uh, this session is definitely not enough to cover everything that needs to be talked about this topic. It's just a glimpse of uh, some of the main focus areas. And uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. Looking forward uh, to meeting you and talking to you in person.